Hi guys and welcome back to another uh, video of Gaming with the Powers. I'm Jake and today we're going to be continuing uh, looking at all of the Marvel United Multiverse Kickstarter campaign updates. So we're looking at update 16 to 20 um, today. So let's go ahead and dive right into it and see what we got. So looking at update number 16, Sharp Blade, Sharp Aim, okay? Uh, the community has been successful in hitting the 710k mark, unlocking Crimson Dynamo. And next up on tap is Raza. Um, I have never heard of Raza in my life. Raza Long Knight um, is the last known surviving member of his unnamed alien race and a member of the Star Jammers. Ah, I've never heard of him because he's a member of the Star Jammers. I've never heard of the Star Jammers before. Um, I'm not going to read all that. I'll just read some. Like the X-Men, he joined the Star Jammers to fight for freedom. Uh, during Vulcan's reign as the Magister, Magister of Shi'ar. Uh, let's see. He, Raza was captured and made to host the symbiote ZZZXX, which forced him to commit horrific war crimes at Vulcan's command. Eventually, he was captured by Nova Prime, who used Nova Corps' resources to safely separate Raza from the symbiote, and Raza eventually rejoined the Star Jammers. All right, so we got another Star Jammer on deck. Um... Let's see what we got. Raza Long Knife is a formidable fighter for the Star Jammers, fast on his feet and always ready for battle. His skill with a blade allows him to keep fighting thug after thug, while his marksmanship enables him to take deadly pot shots at adjacent locations. Is he a nod to like Gamora? Is he like the Gamora of the Star Jammers? Um, here's his model right there. Uh, allows him to take pot shots at adjacent locations. That's always good. And then, as always, being a part of the Star Jammers, uh, he's going to have a Star Jammer crew card, which will give him an extra wild token if a card in the previous storyline is a Star Jammer card. Um, all right, so that's, I mean, this is a short one right here. So that's what we got. We got Raza coming. If we can hit the 740k uh, mark, this is update number 16. Uh, sharp blade, sharp aims. All right, guys, update number 17. Things might get prickly. Uh, so we are successful in hitting the 740K mark, unlocking Raza. Up next, at 770, we have M. Oh, man, that's the... She could turn into the crazy feral creature, I believe. Uh, so let's see. Mont St. Croix. Uh, she was born as a mutant. Yep. A uh, student of dark magic invited her to join him in World Conquest, but she rejected him. In retaliation, he turned her into a red-skinned mute uh, penance. Thinking she had died, her younger twin sisters banished Marius to another dimension, and Monet followed. To spare their father from a broken heart, the twins used her powers to merge with each other into a single being that duplicated Monet uh, mentally and physically. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, there we go. She could turn into that little crazy creature. Um... Uh, again, I don't know a whole lot about her, but I just knew she could transform into some creature of some type. Uh, M is a powerful mutant with a traumatic past that gave her the ability to transform into Penance, a dangerously feral creature. At the end of every villain turn, she can choose whether to stay in her M form or whether to turn into Penance. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, what does it say? At the start of the game, place this card with this side face up in front of you. At the end of each villain turn, you may flip this card to change to Penance form. At the end of each villain turn, you may flip this card to change to M form. That's awesome. I wish... They would come out with more characters like this where you could like change forms in between. I think that'd be cool. Um, so this choice affects the ability she's able to access on several of her cards. In her M form, she's able to fly, use her genius intellect to reveal the next master plan card, fire devastating concussive blasts across several locations, or use telepathy to turn up cards in the storyline that have been turned face down. In her penance form, she uses her claws to deal devastating, unpreventable damage. Her dense skin can protect her from damage, and her razor-sharp skin makes her lethal, even though she may also hurt any other heroes who get too close to her. Okay? There is a model of her. Uh, they do like a half split on her face. What they should have done is made like a, a like. Again, this is just my opinion. I don't know if it's realistic, but what would have been cool is if they split her like in half, maybe on just like the face or the upper body, and had like one half the penance form and the, the other half like that form. That'd be kind of cool. Like I would like to have a model of penance maybe um, that you could like switch out, but I can see how that'd be tedious. Um, all right, guys, so this is update number, let me check, number 17, things might get prickly. 
uh, looking at the new hero M. All right, moving on to update number 18. The mercenary, mercenary has a bone to pick. Uh, we've been successful in hitting the 770k mark, unlocking M, and up next at 810k, my man Crossbones. All oh, good old Crossbones, yep. Um, yep, I know him, Crossbones. Brock Rumlow, New York City game member, turned graduate of infamous Tac Master School for Criminals. Um, all right, Crossbones is a mercenary, which means he has no interest in fighting anyone unless there's money to be gained by doing that. Unfortunately, he has many high value targets among the civilian population, and that does not sit well with the heroes. His threats represent bounties on the civilians of each location, increasing Crossbones' head money track for each civilian he discards. Overflowing civilians also increase the track, while overflowing thugs bring back clear threats. Uh, his master assassin card can wipe out all civilians in his location. Oof, that's tough. And his bams can also discard civilians all around him, but that's not to say heroes are safe from crossbones. When he bams, crisis tokens representing bounties are placed on any of the heroes around him, then most of his master plan cards unleash his full arsenal against these marked heroes, forcing them to discard specific cards. Uh, the more crisis tokens you have, the higher the price on your head, and so the harder crossbones will fight for you. Will fight you. Um, that's kind of cool. Get him all the bounties. He's going to be juiced up. Coming at you with full force. Um, there's his 3D render model there. Um, if I remember, he might have been in the movie. He might have been in the uh, Black Widow movie, maybe. Or I just could be completely wrong. Um, but yeah, Crossbones is a pretty well-known villain um, across the Marvel Universe. Um, all right, so there's a little model there. That's what we got for Crossbones. Sounds kind of interesting. You got to get a handle on those bounties and make sure he is not getting stronger by collecting those bounties. Okay, guys, this is update number 18. Uh, a, the mercenary has a bone to pick. All right, guys, looking at update number 19. We are looking at the Wrecking Crew. Um, so just a quick snapshot here that they're doing a weekend review. Um, that CMON is. You can check out that video to see like basically all the content that I've been talking about here. They're going to be able to explain it more in depth. Um, but they weren't talking about the Wrecking Crew here. This is going to be a part of the any pledge that you do. So the Galactus Pledge or the Core Box Pledge, these Wrecking Crew will come in here. Uh, Wrecking Crew is a pretty standard Marvel villain. Uh, they were in She-Hulk, I believe. Uh, in one of the first episodes when they tried to hit her with the crowbar. Um, but, you know, the crew is Wrecker, Thunderball, Bulldozer, Pile Driver. Um, you know, I had them, I had their expansion when I had Marvel Champions and played against them, and they were kind of cool how you got to fight all four of them at the same time. So you're probably going to be able to do that here. Uh, but looking at their villain board, uh, let's see what they got 468, 468, 468, 468. Okay, so all health across the board. Uh, when six threats have been cleared, the villains become under pressure and can be damaged. When Wrecker moves, the crowbar token goes with him. Okay, uh, there's going to be their plot track that they have there. And let's kind of read and see what we got. Uh, the, the quartet starts all together in the same location. Most of their master plan cards will activate two of them at a time, moving them around, triggering their bams, and adding civilians and thugs to their locations. The other cards either activate all of them or trigger very special effects. Their master plan isn't much more complex than just stealing all the loot that they can. KOing heroes and causing overflows increase their loot track. Um, all of the threats and bank robberies, uh, which the heroes must stop one by one by spending moves, attacks, and heroic actions before they can finally take on the Wrecking Crew directly. Um, there are no other missions in this game. However, one of the master plan cards might completely change the villain's plan mid-game, shifting their strategies. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Like, oh, y'all thought y'all had us beat? Nope. Switch strategy. Uh, so the Wrecker. Let's see what each crew brings to the fight. All right, so Wrecker is obviously the leader. He's got the magic crowbar. Uh, he carries with him wherever he goes. Uh, it empowers the other members, serves as a rallying point, and can bring back clear threats. Wrecker is the toughest of the bunch, hitting hard with his crowbar and flooding his locations with thugs and civilians. All right. There's his model there. That's a, that's a pretty cool model right there. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> uh, Thunderball swinging around a ball and chain. All right. Uh, Thunderball swings his ball and chain with surprising strength, being able to hit heroes in adjacent locations. If Wrecker's magic crowbar is nearby, 
His attacks deal even more damage. He also brings additional thugs to his aid. Um, all right. Pile driver. I mean, I always thought he looked like a wrestler. He's basically just a wrestler. Uh, pile driver is fast and his oversized fists hit like a ton of bricks. Especially if the Wrecker's crowbar is nearby. He also endangers civilians in his location. You better watch out for them fists. Fist of Fury. And then, of course, Bulldozer. Uh, the Wish version of Juggernaut. I apologize for that statement if anybody's offended by that. Uh, Bulldozer is as tough as Wrecker. He chases the next hero whenever, wherever he may be. And charges headlong into them, dealing extra damage if the Magic Crowbar is nearby to empower him. So, note to self. Separate the magic crowbar. Do not be near the magic crowbar or get rid of the magic crowbar if you can. Um, and that is Bulldozer's uh, game piece right there. All right, guys. So for update number 19, uh, that was a look at the Wrecking Crew. Uh, what you can get if you back the... Um, what you'll be getting if you back the... Any, any pledge here. Any pledge here. Okay. Last one, guys. Moving on to update number 20. And this is going to be Painted Models, the Core Box, Galactus, and Initial Promos. Uh, so let's just take a moment to appreciate some of the examples of what character pieces you will receive in your pledge, what they can look like when painted. Uh, granted, the folks at Big Child Creatives, the studio commissioned to create these inspiring paint jobs, are masters with the paintbrush. But these character pieces have a perfect combination of exaggerated proportion, striking poses, and amazing details. All right, so let's look at the Core Box here. Uh, wow. Uh, that is amazing. Amazing work. Uh, that's Captain Carter, Ironheart. Man, look at those details on that paintbrush. And like the, the finish on that, Loki. Dude, the shading on there is crazy. Mighty Thor, Jane Foster. That looks amazing. Spider-Man 2099, dude. Man, this makes me want to like get these. Look, it's going to be expensive. Be creative. Please. Commission, paint all of my Marvel United stuff. It's probably going to be like $3,000. But that is, this looks phenomenal. This is a superb job. Look at all this craftsmanship here. That is just beautiful. Emperor Doom. Oh, man, that's lovely. I guess that's Kang. I don't remember who that is. Maestro. Man, that looks good. Um, The Wrecking Crew. That's... Man, that's a good one right there. That's all good. Oh, we got the Galactus. Ooh, look at that Galactus. Dude, that'd be worth it right there just to have that painted. Um, man, that's that's awesome. That's cool. Damn, these are just... I mean, this is awesome. Dude, this is like big child creatives, man. Phenomenal job on this paint work. Um, Iron Lad. Yep. Okay, guys. Not really an update per se, but this is just kind of like a. This has a tease. That's what they did. They're like, hey, do you want to see how good these things look when painted? We commissioned the company to do this. If you want to commission them, it's probably gonna cost you thousands and thousands of dollars. Uh, so if you don't want them to look this good, then try it yourselves. Now, now again, they didn't say anything in the update how much it costs. I'm just assuming. That with the quality of this work, it's going to be a pretty penny. But, I mean, that is that is quality work. Okay, guys. So, that was update number 16 through 20. Um, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this content. I'm going to be busting out more, catching us up. And go ahead and write in the box. Uh, let's say it was $1,000. Would you pay $1,000 for Be Creative to paint all of your Marvel United content? Everything. Well, everything in this campaign. So let's say you did the Herald Pledge, everything that you saw here. Would you pay $1,000 to get all of that painted with that exact craftsmanship? Um, also, drop something in there and let me know what favorite character or villain to go against in this set of updates I've, uh, I've done. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. As always, guys, y'all have a good one. Bye.